working and live and we'll check definitely going to be live i bet you any money i i, I bet you that who do you think is going to be first this time um well it's been a it's been a while i mean i'd like to say we were first but uh yeah <laughs> because it's been a, it's been a quite a nah, while if i know these guys they've been clicking refresh 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 trying to get this page up and running is that what it was uh, anthony few... christian hey, anthony. how are we doing how's it going mate yeah we'll just check uh, it, it's weird i know anthony is, is obviously there and but we'll, we'll check if we're live it's always been out that way since the beginning right? yeah because, uh, i realized the other day that actually this month is three years since we started uh, doing these which is a bit crazy is it three um, years three years wow <laughs> how how our hair and faces must have changed over those years we need a we should have like a a, a kind of next each each week or when we do actually turn up each I, I don't know if i want to see <laughs> <laughs> like that's fair that's fair hey tina how's it going tina's here hey tina i hope all is well and anthony um yeah it's really good to be back i know um it's while, well it's been a busy couple of weeks because we've been going through the migration haven't we and yeah uh, which is it's been a bit, a bit frustrating because a little bit delayed, but you know systems and and, and development and, and that kind of stuff never is never straight yeah. straightforward. Um, but we um, yeah it's working really well now. We're over halfway there, so we're over halfway up that mountain, Dave. Yeah, uh, well we're up the top of the mountain now. We're on our way way down. Right? Yeah, the journey to migrate in Yetis is never straight or easy. Mm. But um, no, it's really exciting actually having to play around with a new uh, new website for the first time after yeah. we've been seeing it for a while. Um, it's nice to see, isn't it? Yeah, really nice it's really see. good. It's really good. I mean, hopefully that you guys will enjoy it as much as we enjoy it as well. I think um, there's a section as well, which is all about Brian, um, I think is all about Brian's running stats, I think. Um, Bri Bri. And I've seen you being out and about as always, but um, yeah, we needed a big section for that. And then we needed a big section for Jerome's rocks. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. I mean, Brian, I, what are your knees like, mate? Like, <laughs> like, that's what worries me, mate. That's what worries me. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, but uh, but yeah, Jerome was saying uh, is the launch of the website and the first ever launch of the SpaceX Starship Super Heavy Rocket. Uh, it did, yes. In any way. Good job that ours didn't blow up, right? Um, because uh, I know that it blew up. Uh, well, they, they they tactically blew it up a couple of minutes in because it wasn't disconnecting apparently. Yeah. Honestly, been following SpaceX for years. They're fantastic. Um, but yeah, luckily there was no um, catastrophic things like that. And um, hey, Stuart. Um, well, hello, Jetties. I quite like that. But I like to see you've uh, you've corrected it, Stuart. But now nah, Jetties is that's fine. That works. Jetties. Jetties is good. Yeah. Yeah. I happy with that. I feel like that needs to be near a water somewhere maybe like a lake like an aqua yeti like a jetty that yeah. goes oh, in yeah. Come on, Dave. yeah no sorry yeah so i got it i got it i got it, I got it, I got it. It's, it's, just... it's been you know because i'm not firing on all cylinders yet it's you know been a while with the bands. five minutes into the tti and i'll be right back with it switch on in the brain you're there but um anyway talking about switching it on um we're going to kind of segue into the what we're talking about today Mate, I'm... <laughs> not my first rodeo yeah. <laughs> but no we, we did want to talk about you know some link to to our systems that's going through at the moment which is um, you know, being a bit crazy. And before we do go there, I just want to say thank you to everyone. I had some nice comments, um, some nice feedback as well. And thanks to everyone that's kind of pointing out some of the, the kind of glaring errors and, and, and some spellings, you know, all that stuff that's on the new, whenever someone launches a new website, um, you know, there, there are things that, that kind of do slip through the cracks. Um, so thanks for, for those people who have messaged and commented and done that stuff. Yep. Also as well, a huge thanks to all the Evertrackers with a bit of patience as well, because um, can appreciate you can't log into your members area at the moment. Um, you can't do some of the things you used to do, but that will literally happen over the next several days. We'll, we'll let everyone know so they can set up their new account. Yeah. Um, and then you'll be able to manage your booking in, a, in, a, in an entirely different way, but uh, it's going to be um, a lot, lot better going forward. Um, yeah, but these systems, you know, be, as Dave said, they've been in development for some time now. We've been wanting to kind of get these live and, and the, the kind of crowdfunding investment round we did at the back end of 2022 um yeah has allowed us to kind of push forward with launching these new systems which you know takes a lot yeah. of time a lot of energy um you know not, not cheap either so it's definitely um um uh, been great to kind of launch that whilst we're talking about launching rockets yeah it's been great to, to launch that yeah. as well yeah only elon musk could have his rocket explode and then tweet what a successful launch <laughs> really? but i well, don't think it was heading anywhere i think they had to blow it up at some point right uh, it wasn't going to the moon 
No, it was it was a test flight, but I think because they've got multiple versions of this film. Yeah, super heavy rocket. Um, super heavy with um, Starship on top of it. It's pretty. It's yeah. pretty cool, isn't it? I, I I'm always I was like anyone that calls a, a rocket Starship. Yeah, well that that's it. Yeah. It needs to be invocative, doesn't it? You don't want it like. It does. I always thought space shuttle sounded a bit boring. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's Ron Seal. It is Ron Seal. It, you know, it and is, I guess, but, but, you know, you got like the Apollo Moon rocket. The Apollo yeah. Moon rocket <laughs> sounds amazing, and then you have the space shuttle, which just seems a shuttle seems to me like something you do at an airport to get between terminals. <laughs> is that what it you was? You know, not to get to outer space. Um, um, hang on. Is that we're going <laughs> yeah. to leave space? We're going to come back to trekking. Right? Yeah. And, um, yeah. You know, because we do want to uh, talk about trekking systems, and I think we were discussing ways of, <clears throat> you know, how do specific things we do on a trek, or even before your trek, um, make a difference when you're there? And you know, if you've been on any of our lives over the last three years um you probably would have heard us talk about some of these things over that time um so we hope we haven't bored you to tears with it but you know i think we've had inspiration from you know talks we've been to um you know some sort of presentations things we've read about and i know there's a couple of people that you know Saral finds talks a lot about it in his books yeah uh, as well as lots of other interesting stuff um but also as well there are other people like uh, was it louis rudd we saw at um uh, who's, a, who's a famous explorer, uh, not not quite as famous as um, uh, Sir Ralph Fiennes, but basically someone who does a lot of trekking and exploring in the Antarctic. He's done loads of stuff. Yeah. Give him a little Google. If you type in Louis Rudd and Shackleton, um, you'll you'll come up with a lot of interesting stuff about him. But yeah, he's he was actually beaten to the um, he was he was trying to become the fastest person to walk across the uh, ski. Antarctic ski, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and an American beat him by two days. Yeah. Uh, which must have been really disheartening. I mean, um, I wonder if he hear about that on the way. On the way, I was like, I'm just going to carry on. I'm just going to do it. Like, yeah, yeah. If you're two days shy of the South Pole, you still got to go there. Yeah. But it must have been those two days must have been <clears> so <throat> hard and demoralizing. Yeah. But what? But he did of, it. But you know, one of the things that he talked about when we were lucky enough to um, go and see a talk by him, mm. and he did talk about like, yeah, it's almost building systems into the day to day these mundane routines yes that keep the whole machine working you exactly know? That's, that's a good way of putting it yeah and yeah. that like if you go into it and you've got like if you've just got a to-do list a list of things you need to do and no yeah. system to do them then you end up missing things off it's kind of scatter approach you know mm -hmm. something up but if you build in a system <clears> that's kind <throat> of just get you to repeat the same things over and over and over again yeah. like i know most people that put crampons on put them on the same feet in the same way every yeah. single time um because they know that that's the way that they function and they can do it without thinking yeah and we were talking about there's so many things that we do that's almost like it's like it's like ocd trekking in a way like <laughs> <laughs> like wow. the way like the way that we kind of um well, because the, the boring things we do on a day basis yeah but we yeah. But, but i'm thinking like the, you know even when we're trekking so how do you make sure you drink enough water? Exactly, yeah. That's, you know, that's a big one. Like, yeah, if you're talking about systems, then let's let's, let's start with hydration. Yeah, because it's an important one. I mean, um, <clears throat> you know, you, you're, you're trying to get to a certain um, level of hydration, so you're thinking, right, okay, I've got three and a half, four liters of water. I've got to drink today, and you're thinking, how do I, how do I drink all that? It seems like a lot, but when you break it down into sections, and yeah. right, I get up in the morning, I'll have a have a coffee. I'll have uh, you know a couple of cups of water, maybe some of my bottles. So I'll aim to drink maybe half a litre yeah. before I actually start the trek. Then you've got your bladder, which you know probably has maybe a litre or two in as well. And you're thinking, right, every time I stop, I'm going to have some water. So that creates a habit. Then when you're constantly doing that, every time then you're stopping for breaks or for lunch, you've got another cup of tea, you've got more water. Next thing you know, you've probably drank three litres by the time you get to your whatever you're going to get to. Yeah. And then you've got another litre to drink before the well, end of funny. that. And that's a, that's a if you think of it like, like a system, then and in, in that way, it becomes, a, I know it sounds a really boring, but actually, if that's what it takes to, to, to make sure you're hydrated, that when you get to like Everest Base Camp, yeah. Machu Picchu, you know, maybe the uh, K2 Base Camp, you're going to actually get there. One, your body's going to be in a better condition and you're going to be acclimatized. Better. Yeah, I mean... I have a different way of hydrating depending yeah. on which trip I'm on. But if we take EBC, because Andrea's just joined us and she's just mm. come back from EBC. How's the um the, the post trip blues, Andrea? It's something that um, I did see that. Do you know do you know the only way to really truly get rid of it is to go again? Um That's true. Yeah. Well, wow, book another trip. Yeah. That's what I 
<laughs> some people ask me sometimes, um, and, I, and I see a lot of people who are generally perkier in life, and um, they're always like, why are you so happy? And I'm like, because I got another trip booked in. I got yeah. another adventure. I'm already thinking about the next trip. Yeah. It um, helps. It helps, have, to do it. it helps to have something to do because um, something to look forward to. I remember when I, well, when I first came back from the Himalaya the first time, I don't know, I was so buzzed. Yeah. And I think part of the reason was is because I knew I'd go back. You know, there was absolutely no way mm. that I wasn't ever going to go back again. It wasn't one and done for me. That was now. What, in Nepal? Yeah. Beach holidays yeah. were out the question. It was night and day compared to it. But yeah, talking, going, jumping back to water. Yes. So yeah, so my system when I do EBC yeah. is that I know that I sweat a lot, right? So I want to drink at least kind of like four, four and a half liters a day. Lot, it's been known. It's been known. <laughs> um, especially when I'm trekking. Um, I was going to say, you're looking quite cool right now. Yeah, that's because they don't know we've got the fan it's on. has got the fan over there. And I'm only cool. sipping this coffee sparingly. Um, but yeah, so literally, but it's weird. And this is almost like a strange... Some people say, well, why don't you just do it this way? Well, yeah, yeah. this is the way that works for me. And that is, well, I've got a three liter water bladder. And yeah. when I'm on an EBC trip, I know that you set up in the morning, you'll stop for lunch, and then you'll go to the end of the trip. Yeah. So I only half fill my bladder. That liter and a half has got to be drank by lunch. Right. And sometimes if I arrive at lunch and I've still got some water left, you'll nail, nail through I'll it. nail through <laughs> it so I can fill okay. another liter and a half wow. up. Yeah, and yeah. then that's got to be done yeah. by the time I finish the day. And now, honestly, say we arrive at Kengboche, and I'm like, oh, I still got some left. Like I'll sit there like nailing that water. So you make sure you've hit your target. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And nice. drinking only half of the three liters. Mm. So half of it by lunch, half of it by the end of the day. Yeah. Means I have a minimum of three liters every day. And yeah. I won't fill up that water bladder again until I nailed the water. I've had times where I've been it's like, really good. Yeah, I like that. I, you know, we've arrived at like for lunch on an EDC trip and I sit there and I think, ah. Oh, <laughs> You've got to drink more water. I haven't hardly drank anything, <laughs> so I've got to nail like a liter and a half. Well, like um, like most systems and, and software, and if anyone's been involved in, in, in creating <gasps> that stuff, Billy, no Billy's way. joined Billy, us. I haven't seen Billy in ages. How oh, you doing, Billy? Billy Slager. Uh, <laughs> and um, oh, one Billy. of our first ever ever trekkers in 2016 October. Oh, I miss you. Miss you, Ever's Bill. You camp. need to come back, and um, or rather, we need to come over and kind of oh, when we when we do a little visit, we should. Uh, I'll message you, Bill. Because we might be meeting up soon. We are. Yeah. Uh, well, last time I was over there, uh, I messaged Bill, but he was a bit busy. Yeah. But um, I hope all is well. And uh, I think we got Jer um, not Jerome. Obviously, we talked about Jerome. Sorry, Jerome. I know you. Uh, I, I I can drink three liters of water and then pee out five liters. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that's impressive. That's that, that's a heck of a system, mate. Um, I got Diane on here as well, and we got Michael Gillies. Michael, how you doing? Hope all is well. <laughs> pee like a racehorse. I think yeah. Um, uh, what do you say? Something to keep in mind if taking Diamox, 100%. Yeah. We're talking about systems, and there's something that can affect that system. Certainly, um, uh, taking Diamox certainly speeds up the peeing process because there is um, a diuretic. You know, it does kind of make you one. Obviously, you've got to back that up with drinking, you yeah. know, more water. You will pee more. One of the most important things as well is particularly yeah. if you went because I jumped on Diamox on Kilimanjaro, but you weren't. Mm. So it was about halfway up the mountain, I, I jumped onto it just because it wasn't firing on all cylinders. And one thing I realized very quickly is you need to take, so if I was doing half a pill in the morning, half a pill in the evening, yeah. but that half a pill in the evening has got to be taken at least three hours before you go to bed. Yeah. I mean, not always, and, but I, I know what you mean. For you, me, it was. For the target, yeah, yeah. And I had to stop drinking almost. Yeah. Because otherwise, you're gonna otherwise go it's line. relentless, yeah, yeah. just up, down, up, down, up, down. But yeah, six liters of water, that's that's hardcore. I struggle to get that much. And generally I drink at least four, four and a half liters. Mm -hmm. But yes, yeah, so we'll do the three liters using the half and half method. Yeah. And then it's sit down for lunch with my uh my Nalgene. Yeah, Nalgene. Love Fill it. that up with a liter of water, put yeah. a couple of rehydration salts in there, have that before bed, got me four liters with all the tea and stuff like that, four and a half. Hey dues to Richard. Hey Richard, how you doing, mate? Um I know we've been enjoying the, the group calls on the summit zone over the last couple of months. Um, even in the car, I have my water bladder hooked on the back to help keep my habit of drinking the water. I mean, Rich, to be fair, I've never seen that, but I, I, I want to see a picture of this. This sounds I can amazing. Him driving along the tube. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> that is amazing. That's like uh, what fighter pilots and Formula yeah, One is, drivers yeah. do. It's impressive. I, like yeah, no, I, I want to try it. that now. Um, I, I, yeah, I think I will. I'm going to yeah. try it. Um, um, <laughs> it's a great point, though. Pratesh, I've been diagnosed with an overactive mm. bladder. That sounds nightmarish oh, i know oh my god yeah um, be... you i i don't know what you do well because i'm peeing a lot 
you've got a thimble. <laughs> like when we go on a long drive, we're bladder like, of a bladder. Yeah, like, Andy will be like I'll jump in the car with him. All right, Dave, set off. Yeah, mate. Yeah. How do you sleep? All right. Yeah, just need a pee. At <laughs> the end of the street. That is true. That is yeah, true. Joe, you and uh, the great bald yeti John are the same. I I don't know what it is. I mean, I do drink a lot of water. I do drink coffee. Um, yeah, you know, and 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 some things do 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 flow more than others. Yeah. But it's a good point. I know we're we're talking about systems, but whilst we're on the subject of water, yeah, I think Pratesh um, certainly have an overactive bladder. It's hard, isn't it? Because you've been advised one thing. Yeah, actually, if you're dehydrated, you are going to feel the altitude a lot more. Yeah. Um, you know, so I mean, obviously, listen to medical advice. I mean, from our point of view, from going to altitude, you know, you still want to keep up that that water intake yeah. uh, and, and at least find try and find that balance. Because, um, you know, if you're trekking over his base camp, you don't want to purposely not be drinking water. No, I think no. that wouldn't be wouldn't be good. But I, I know it's hard because, yeah, it's not um, it's not a clear answer there, is it? No. <laughs> you know, because you're like, OK, what, what is if, if I'm thinking of systems here, what is the right amount for me? It's, um, it's tricky if you've got like, there's lots of people that go to like EBC with various different issues that yeah. they need to kind of manage along the way that make it annoying or inconvenient. Honestly, there's no real way around drinking lots of water to help you acclimatize. Yeah. Um, it so, is unfortunately, it might just be a case where, I mean, what you could potentially do, I suppose, is 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 little and often throughout the whole day, you know, rather than trying to, because some yeah. people, in order to make sure they have enough, is they neck like half a liter in the morning and yeah. then they go out trekking and they'll neck another half a liter. That's true, actually, because it, they, they do say it's, you know, from, from all the all the things that we've learned, Little and often is better. Yeah, yeah, because it's more gradual. Like, you know, because yeah. if you neck half a litre of water, mm. you're going to need to pee within half an hour, an hour. Yeah, and that's out of your body then. Where yeah. if you do little and often, just so the water bladder will be key, little and often, yeah. little and often, little and often, and just do that throughout the day. And, you know, uh, protection might just be that you need to, uh, you might need to go and find a bush a little more often than everyone else. But that's true. I, I promise you that's probably less annoying than altitude sickness. So um, yeah, I suppose you're right, actually. Yeah, it's the, the lesser of two evils there. Yeah, it? exactly. And, you know, I, I feel you. I mean, that must be really annoying. Um, but, you know, I find my knee really annoying when I'm going downhill. And I hate the fact that I can walk as fast as you up and flat. And then as soon as we go down, <laughs> he's like an ant in the distance. And, I, and I'm walking down like some old man. But unfortunately, yeah, well, we always catch up at the end. Yeah, that's it. I'm always waiting. We start and finish at the same time. Yeah, that's right. Never leave a never leave a man behind. More, more <laughs> yeah. <than>. Um, <laughs> but no. Um, obviously, we talked about water a lot, and I, I hope we've got a cross around. If you can systemize your drinking as much as you can, uh, little and often, um, as Dave mentioned there, it you know it does work well. Then we move on to nutrition of food because it's a tricky one at altitude. It is because a big part of you know when you're altitude one of the first things and i've always struggled with this actually i do lose my appetite um i don't eat as much i don't want to eat as much i still got my energy luckily um but i know that isn't for everyone because you know when, when you haven't got food in you and you're walking like 10 kilometers in a day and it's difficult it's hot um you know the sun's beating down on you you know, you're going up going down you know you can feel lethargic and next thing you know you feel like you're a zombie um and it's important to keep your nutrition up so if we're talking about systems we've seen people in the past um uh, you know something they've done is that they've had and you know everyone's different not necessarily this is something for us like we know that we know our bodies we, we know how it works for altitude and how we know that if we if we eat those meals we drink this water our bodies are going to be fine you, know, you might need a, a snack every now and again you know a chocolate bar some nuts some sweets um to keep you kind of you know, your, your levels your sugar levels um at a good point um you know, but there are, I forgot her name, was it Ross who had those little bags of sweets yeah. Do you know what? named and written, one for each day? That came up last night in the, really? in the call. Oh, nice. So on Kilimanjaro is eight days to the summit. Yeah, yeah. So she had eight little sandwich bags. For each day. With, for each day yeah. with little snacks in there, but also, um, I believe, little messages from people in there as well. Well, the, the psychological stuff's just as important. Yeah, exactly. So little yeah. like pick me ups. I said if I yeah. if I said if I if someone asked me to do that, I'd go quick to them back. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, you would be the sick one. Yeah, yeah but um, <laughs> but no, you're, you're dead. You're dead right about food, and you touch. I'm glad you one. finished that one then. Yeah, yeah. You're dead. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah. You're dead. No, I wouldn't put that note in. But um, yeah. What I what I think is you were dead right about the um the food and yeah. how appetite can play a big part in yeah. trekking at altitude. And what I found is, you know, one experience was that you know, the old man came 
in 2017. Yeah. And really, really struggled to eat the first time round. Yeah. There was not a lot that he wanted to eat. And then he stopped short just outside of Lobuche and turned back. Second time we went back in 2020, he felt perfectly fine yeah. and ate all the way. And I was wondering, like, why is the difference? Right? Why is it that he lost his appetite on one time and not yeah, on another? That's interesting. Good question. Yeah. And I honestly think part of that was in the his system of preparation. Yeah. yeah. So the first time he didn't do anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> but the second well, time he didn't know what he didn't know, right? But yeah, it's, yeah. it's interesting. I yeah. think he thought, like a lot of people do, yeah. um, you know, that oh, I, I probably am underprepared, but I'll mm. wing it. Mm. And some people, most people, maybe can get away with can it. Can get away with yeah, it. Yeah. But also the amount of people that end up having to turn back or join Chopper Club quite often are in Wing It Club. Yeah. And I think the difference was that he, one, made sure that his hydration was on point. Yeah, he did. He yeah. took Diamox from the beginning of the trip, which he didn't do on the first time, yeah. to give himself that little acclimatization boost. Yeah. Um, he walked um, very gradually, very slowly. Remember I've said that my dad walks so slow, there's a type of, it's like a moss grows on him. <laughs> <laughs> it only, only grows on the back of dogs. Only grows on the back of dogs. And yeah. for any other dogs out there, just check your back. Yeah, but um, <laughs> it's totally normal to lose your appetite, but the yeah, snacks yeah. is yeah. key because it there's is. always something that someone can eat if they don't feel well Excuse or me. something like that. And I've seen people bring packets of beef jerky. I've seen people bring like Haribo's. Yeah. I've seen people bring just like energy gels, whatever gets you through the day. You need to supplement the food you're going to be eating yeah. with those treats. Because I've had days where like I really lose my appetite. I like to sit next to people who do I was going to say, you usually sit next to me, and I'm like, hey, do you fancy it? Yeah, I can eat those, can eat those chips. I'm like, great. But, um, um, that's quite funny, isn't it? But one thing I do think, though, if you do lose your appetite, like, you're like I've seen yeah, you, like, yeah. you'll be like, oh, I can't eat that. I'm just going to have a chocolate bar. Well, this is know, it. Like, there's and, still something getting there. And sometimes you've got to forget about it. And I know it's as easier said than done. It's not easy to eat food when you don't want to eat it. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you have got to force it down. Um, and again, I know this... this I'm not kind of painting the, uh, the a nice little picture here, but we'd rather tell you how it is than, than you get surprised by this stuff. And I know a lot of ever trekkers on here, um, you know, people like Diane, Richard, um, you know, Pratesh, we've got Jerome, um, we've got uh, Jim, we've got Tina, you know, we've got Andrea, we, we've got a lot of people who've been at altitude already. And it's, um, <laughs> you. I, I, I take it what you read there. Was I always take hairdos with me on hikes. Uh, yeah, but I take it that was Haribo's protection. I'm, assu I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming it was Haribo's. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking, real, but it is good. Every day you get a new hairstyle, like you do morale up, <laughs> whatever floats your boat. I made everyone morale shoot up when I thought that I'd use um, talc as dry shampoo. Oh. I put way too much on my head. I came downstairs and you said I looked like an ice gem. <laughs> because it was like all frosty. Well, I thought it was a bit, bit of a scar face. I thought, Jesus Christ, you don't want to do that stuff for altitude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but luckily, it was uh, it was just help. Yeah, it was just help. So that was help. Um, yeah, so it was a uh, Ebolia. Um, oh yeah, welcome Ebolia. Yeah, and uh, good luck for Kilimanjaro in September. Yeah, fiftieth birthday uh, for your husband and yourself. Right, like good. it, aging in style, aging well, in style. And what a way to to see in your fifties. It's funny that awesome. you, you know. Then you could do. Um, who did we have? What was it? Oh, Shame on me, I forgot his name. The chap that did uh, three passes on his 60th. Uh, Alan. Alan. Alan Payne, yeah, back in um, April 2019. Yeah, remember that trip very well. Um, great guy, great guy, Alan. Uh, he hasn't joined any lives for a while, but I know he. Uh, no. he he's, he's kind of he's done the, th uh, the, the the three passes trip and he's done Killy. Absolutely as well, isn't love he? it. Yeah, yeah, he's done Killy. You know, he before told, we were around. Yeah. He told me um, he was out in Tanzania doing like a safari or something like that. Anyway. Yeah. And um, he saw Kilimanjaro and he said it was almost like a spiritual experience. And he knew that he was going to have to go to the top. Well, at that point. At that point. Brilliant. And so he went back and then climbed Kili. Yeah. And um, and then um, some years later on his 60th, yeah, when he did uh, three passes. Yeah, and Amazing. he was a beast. That was a, I always remember that because that was Bal Kumar, who still guides for us now, like four, four and a bit years later. Yeah. And um, they called him uh, Bruce Lee because he's so lean actually runs up some of the passes but i remember that that was the magnificent seven group yeah the seven they, they they named themselves this which is quite cool <laughs> um but yeah they uh that was an awesome awesome uh three passes trip yeah um by the end of my go-to was egg sandwich i lost appetite yeah andrea honestly i'm with you there i think when it comes to food and we're talking about the system of eating that food as much as you can because you're going to need it um yeah sometimes you've got to go to the, the easy stuff like sometimes for me, especially in Nepal, I'll eat 
um, especially in the evenings, I'll just eat momos and chips. And I'll have that for like five or six days in a row um, until I get to base camp and all the way back and I'll just eat whatever I fancy. Yeah. Um, but I, I do that because I know I'll eat it. I'm not going to leave it and I'll have the energy for the next day. It's boring. And, and, and luckily, momos doesn't really get boring. But, you know, it's nice. If, if, if we all ate pizza every day, it's it's tasty. But after a while, you'd probably be like, oh, fancy something different. Yeah. You know? Um, but again, it's part of the systemization of Right, getting your food intake and your nutrition uh, down to a T. My go-to is they always have chips there. Mm. Um, I just ask for chips and a couple of pieces of bread. Chip butties will catch uh, up. Yeah, you, yeah, it worked for you, didn't it? Yeah, I'd love a chip butty. Fact, you do what works for yourself, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, and and Diane mentions here she's got the the jelly sweets and and you know if oh, what maybe better than she cereal bars. Walter the worm or something. Yeah, the worms. Yeah, they're quite cool. I remember I, bringing them on the training I, weekend. I, I buy them it? for Marks and Spencers now whenever I'm there. Oh, they're, they're really, they're really nice. nice. I think they're they vegan do, as well. Yeah, they? they do fizzy ones, and I, I actually, I'm not a vegan, but I just, I just think they're really tasty. Yeah, I'm sure they're called Walter Worm or something. Even like that. Uh, Jerome knows they're vegan worms. Yeah, don't worry that, and they're totally planet, planet safe as well. Yeah, Walter Worms. There we go. Well, good yeah. memory, Dave. Good memory. Um, so right, we talked about water. Talked about food. So you know, we talked about the the stuff we're kind of, um. You know the we can control but actually a bigger one as well is is the mind and i know it sounds seems weird to kind of have a a systemized approach approach to your mind but think about it in the same way as the water and the food and maybe going back to what Rasheen did is that she had messages every day yeah when she had some food to actually give her a pick me up but if you if you didn't go that that far and that prepared because i mean that is that is rare you know i haven't seen that a lot which is having bags for each day that's that's um, particularly Rasheen that's um, that's definitely Rosh. Yeah, yeah that's Rosh. Yeah. um but if you can almost think of that on a mindfulness kind of level and think what have I got to do each day to keep focused um to keep myself in a good place to not get um so caught up in how difficult it is instead try and enjoy it and you know sometimes that can be um you know you can bring in each day you can actually it could be uh, it sounds a bit mad, something I do, uh, but I think about a moment or a song that actually picks me up. Um, it could be a moment that you're, and, and not to go into massive personal development here, but I'm, I'm, I, I can't help it, um, is that sometimes if I'm ever in a miserable place or, you know, things, it has been one of those days, one of those moments, right? I'll think back to a particular moment in my life where it got me quite emotional. It was quite powerful. It's going to be with me to the day I die. There's going to be a lot of those for you. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not talking about movies that make you cry but this okay. is actual like an experience um it could be you know birth of a child it could be an experience you know a powerful moment if you can remember that um and let that kind of sink in and and you know it, it gets you back to that place a level par essentially um and also as well if you're thinking about a song not everyone's a singer i quite like enjoy singing i'll actually sing it i'll hum it i'll do what needs to be done and next thing you know i'm i've perked up What's i'm song? happy oh there's loads it depends on the time. I suppose right now I, I, I sang Somebody to Love this morning. Oh, Queen's Queen, song. yeah. It's actually good Mine, one. Uh, one of my main go uh, uh, My Sweet Lord by George Harrison. My Sweet Lord. Yeah. I really want to sing. Oh, yeah. That's brilliant, that is. I really want to be with Wow, you. Dave. You got your singing on there. Yeah. Tuesday tuning. Well, yeah. no, that's um, that's not my bag. I'm, <laughs> I'm a spectator. Yeah. Um, just while we're here as well, I know uh, Scott Dutton. Uh, hi, lads. Struggling to log on to the members tab on the website yesterday. Is it down? Um, so, Scott, um, I'm not sure if you've been receiving emails or seen any uh, notifications, but yeah, you can't actually log in on the website at the moment. So we've done, uh, we've got a whole new website, whole new uh, kind of system. Um, so we'll let you know when you can log in. Uh, if you're trying to do a particular um thing on the website try and pay your balance upload any documents just drop them into the central inbox for now which is info at evertrek.co.uk um, it's going to be into next week now when we'll send you your new login details um, so yeah we're right in the middle of migrating everyone over um, unfortunately with the systems we had which it wasn't easy to kind of extrapolate that data and, and just automatically do it it's a bit of a manual process which is fun uh, I can, we can promise you, um, but no, we want to make sure that it's all correct. And um, as we migrate yeah. um, over to our new exciting system. So apologies for that, Scott. But yeah, anyone else as well, if you are trying to do something on the website regarding any members area, um, just hang fire, um, just drop us an email and we can we can get that sorted for you. Yeah. And then you'll be able to um, 
uh, to enjoy it when it's actually there and launched. And you've got this whole new dashboard to, to kind of manage your booking. Awesome. Um, which should be great. But yeah, sorry, what was I talking about there? We were talking about George Harrison. George Harrison. Uh, awesome. Guys, let me know what your, what your like, so you're yeah. on a mountain, you're knackered, you're hurting, morale's dipping, mm. you're starting to think about turning back. What song do you put on your headphones to get you up that hill and get nice. you back in the game? I'd love to know because um, yeah. I'll add them to me uh, to me playlist. But no, but you 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 really do hit on a good point. And obviously, it might not be a song for everyone. Not everyone's exactly. into their music. Yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of people that bring like audio books. I actually met one guy yeah. in, in uh, EBC in October um, that had videos that he left himself. Really? And um, so what he would do is he would be like, so I would Dave talking to Dave, and I say Dave. So yeah, I'm in work today sat in my office yeah i just want to remind you how much this sucks <laughs> um and it was literally like that and it was like so look at so you know look around if you appreciate see, it and yeah, appreciate yeah. it fantastic you know? and literally it was like 10 15 second videos of himself that he just played to remind himself why he did it brilliant and it always reminded brilliant. me of that one saying which is when i um when i feel like i can't go on i like to go back to the beginning and remember why i started or something like nice. that um but yeah David, you got tissues out of them. yeah <laughs> uh, no, and, and I, I weirdly it usually works for me if george harrison fails then something else then i start to think about like because i had it i can think of an exact moment and we've talked about it was when i was on my way down from kilimanjaro summit uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, elation yeah, yeah. of the yeah, summit yeah. yes go back down to camp little rest eat and then the four hour walk back and i, I don't think i fueled properly yeah, my you, system. You, you, you bonked a bit, didn't you? Yeah, and I was just like, I sat on a wall. And I said to Andy, I can't be asked. I really can't be. Bothered. What did I say to you? And you were like, Come on, you've got to get up, have a Snickers. <laughs> but, it was, <laughs> but, it, but do you know? It got you up. But I got up, started eating. Usually, if my morale goes down, it's because I haven't eaten. Yeah, yeah. But one thing I did think about was, what have I just done? Exactly. How many years have I wanted to do that? And also, like that seems so far away now yeah and i like to think of my, my future self thinking i'm going to be in pain all right i'm aching i'm going to be in pain for the next yeah. couple of hours but in a blink of an eye this is going to seem like years ago and who yeah. knows whether i ever get to do it again exactly and so, it's, those moments you know they, they stay with you for the rest of your life exactly yeah um you know they're so powerful because you've gone through like like you said you, you've had such a high there proverbial high and physical yeah. high you're on your way down and maybe andrea as well you know you get back from a a trip like this and um sometimes you're not feeling yourself because you you've, you've been like almost on kind of positive energy for so long and then next thing you know you kind of slow down and you're like wow i need more of this and it's hard yeah. you know because you you want more of that and you want to feel that again i suppose the way i was thinking I, I i kind of always think about it is that you know we've got to kind of appreciate these the kind of things and i think if you are always like if every day of your life i mean maybe i'll kind of regret saying this but if you want adventures every day of your life, you wouldn't appreciate it as much as the the kind of times that you, when you do go. Oh yeah, you got to be you know yin I mean? and yang, haven't you? Um, you know, if, if it's like seeing that same view every day, it's still an amazing view the first time you see it. But if you see that for a thousand times, sometimes it doesn't feel as the same impact. No, exactly. it will on that first time. So I think having these moments, I think because I used to struggle with this when I went um, uh, backpacking a couple of times when I was younger, I used to really struggle saying goodbye to people. Um, I, I used to get quite emotional about it. No surprise, Dave. Eh? Mm. Um, and, you know, you, you kind of, because you're kind of saying goodbye, will I see you again? You know, those experiences you, you kind of feel. But then I actually rationalized it in my head, and, and it's different now, is that I was kind of glad it happened. And it's better, the, better that than it didn't happen. Mm. So I've had those memories. I'll cherish those forever. You know, don't, don't think, you know, okay, you know, I'll miss those moments. And you will. But because you've experienced them, it's best, you know, don't be sorry it's over. Just be glad that it's happened. It's yeah. kind of the, the way I was trying to explain it. We're knocking out mantras you know? today. I know, bloody hell, man. You know what? I've got to write some of these down. Uh, also, I know, <laughs> another thing is, like, talking about mantras, yeah, yeah. sometimes I do kind of get one in my head. Mm. And it's weird. You kind of say it over and over again. And it's almost like, because I find it really hard to meditate, right? I yeah. don't actually think I can do it properly. So when people say, sit down and empty your mind, I'll sit down. And as soon as I sit down, all the thoughts queue up <laughs> to get in. Like, I really find it difficult. But what I can do when I'm trekking or on a bike or doing anything, I can almost have a mantra in my mind 
and a mantra is like sometimes it's a saying or whatever mine isn't quite a saying but it's weirdly the <laughs> song from jaws show me the way you oh go yeah home. when they're on the boat yeah i'm tired i, I want to go to bed yeah, yeah. To bed. That's and brilliant. i literally i could i could do that whole verse okay a thousand times over going up a like a horrible climb or something or because it'll just because it carries it just, on it carries it, on it stops the other yeah intrusive thoughts getting in that's interesting isn't it but um, again it, it, that's a system then that you use yeah to snap you or to keep you focused everyone needs to do it anyway yeah. like at, at some yeah. point when you're in a, a really tough point and the trips that we do are really tough yeah now you might do 10 and not have this experience and then <clears> the 11th <throat> trip you'll go there and you will hit that wall bang yeah. and it's when you hit the wall in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the himalaya miles away from everything it's a four hour walk to the end it's a four hour walk back down or it's a helicopter and you mm. don't want to move how do you fix that problem <laughs> you know like it could be a real problem to solve you need you need a, um, a very big large pattern disruptor yeah exactly and to get you snap you out of that particular yeah, moment right sometimes you can have a mate with you that throws a snickers at your head and tells you to read it and, well, uh, and get off your ass and uh, yeah exactly <laughs> Other times, like I said, I'll just keep walking, and instead of in my head going like, I just think, and I think of that scene when they're banging the table. Show me the way to go home. But luckily, uh, there's no shark that's going to break. I wouldn't mind at that point. Either way, the pain's gone. <laughs> wow. I know. I know. We're kind of talking a little. The jaws are defeated. Yeah, this might be a <laughs> a little bit like esoteric and weird. Yeah. But it's just the the coping methods that people have. Yeah. Are repeated into systems that get you through tough times you know yeah exactly and, and don't underestimate those those mental ones because ultimately they're the ones that are going to get you there or not yeah um you know and it's great and it's nice seeing some some of the songs you, you've posted as well and uh always look on the bright side of life ah brilliant dave dave remington one of my favorites that yeah. is, mate. That, Jim. you can't help but smile when you're singing that or thinking about that in your head and that scene from Life of Brian is just brilliant. Isn't it? Uh, me and Zach were talking about that yesterday. Yeah. We always go like the, the, the stoning bit. He did it again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like, <laughs> all I said was that a piece of halibut was good enough for Jehovah. <laughs> wow. Amazing. It's some great but, um, ones. Rocky for Patesh. Yeah, you can't help but not feel motivated when you hear that. Jimbo um, Blues. 1,000 green bottles. Do you, know, do you know what that reminds me of, right? Okay. There's a scene in the Fast Show. Right. When I think it was on the final ever episode where they they cut back to these hikers in the middle of the skits, yeah. and there's a line of hikers and one guy at the back going la 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 la, and then right at the end after the credits they yeah. go back to that and a guy turns around and decks it. Oh wow! <laughs> Can you imagine the one guy going one thousand green bottles? <laughs> and he's like, why have I had enough of that? Guy? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, Sorry, Jim. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, brilliant. I'm on my way, Andrew Gold. I don't think I've ever heard of that, Jerome. I'm on my... Next time we meet, you're going to have to... Is that what it is? I'm on no, no, that's the, that's the Proclaimers. Pro... It is Proclaimers, I'm on it? my way. I'm on my way. Misery, to read the happiness today. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, yeah, Sorry, then. I was reading. <laughs> yeah. um, Richard, it was hard to come back to such a flat country. <laughs> I, 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 It's mad, isn't it? Well, doing the trek, there was such amazing support from Bal. This American guy befriended me on the route. The fat yeti with a skinny spirit. Brilliant. I See, love they, that. <laughs> I feel like me and Richard just connected <laughs> somehow. Like that's like you know, that. <laughs> but um but no, like uh, honestly Richard um yeah he's doing Killing X as well. Yeah, we had a good uh good sesh. A good sesh last night. And I know uh Rich we should say that was on a call. On a call, yeah. Uh that was on the what was it? You you did the uh, equipment workshop. Yeah, the, it was the, equi the equipment workshop for the summit zone, yeah. It's really, really good. Yeah, nice. Um anyone who isn't in the summit zone, by the way, or anyone that's hasn't heard that word before, um uh yeah, because that, that's bad on us because we should talk about it a bit more. But yeah, Richard um, uh, and a few other trackers actually uh, are already a part of that. Now we do kind of group kind of one to one calls. Um, so we chat about the preparation um, and obviously Rich, uh, you know, doing uh, Killy, um, but, you know, done um, base camp. And, you know, there's other ever trackers who've got certain challenges, certain aims, certain targets. And we kind of coach them through that on a bit more of a, a kind of uh, personal level. Obviously, you know, these are great, these um, Tuesday tune-ins. Still going to uh, continue to do these as, as long as people find them useful. Um, but if anyone is interested in the Summit Zone, um, I hope one of the Yetis will be able to uh, drop the link in there because um, I say you can join that at any time. We will be putting links to this in the members area, your new members area. So you'll be able to kind of go and you'll be able to join um, 
uh, and it obviously is a, a little additional cost, but um, we, it's very useful. Hopefully, you get a little additional benefit as well. Well, yeah, exactly, and, and you know all the all the kind of uh, inner coaching that we do, um, you know, with Richard and um, and Diane and, and some of the other ever trackers in there. Um, I, I like to think, um, guys, have you have you found it useful? Uh, there's me talking about it. I should come from from the Evertrackers themselves, but uh, yeah, the Summit Zone is is something that's very new. Um, but obviously, we're trying to grow it and 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 doing these things like Dave last night. You did um, an equipment workshop. Uh, yeah. It was about seven o'clock last night, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Um, sounded like it went well. No, really well. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and you know me, like I, I talk about equipment. When cows come home. You know? <laughs> it was funny. Like uh, we were talking about like trekking and stuff like that. There but I go. can't do an equipment talk and not bring my ice axe. Yeah. So like this is the ice axe. It's not really relevant for the trips you're on, but anyway, I like to bring it around with me. You like to walk an axe and, in and the my, streets. Mine's yeah. named. Ah, yeah. I wonder why. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> awesome Christmas was that, present. Was that a Christmas present I got for you a couple of years ago? A couple of, you got uh, it was a Christmas present, 2019. 2019. 2019. Wasn't it? Um, and I got you a uh, painted yeti engraved on it. Yeah, because we were gonna <laughs> do. Um, it was Killy in 2020. And then we were going to go on and do Island and yeah. Mera, and then, and then, and then happened. COVID happened. So, but do you know what? <laughs> that, sure. that was hanging on my wall. Yeah, good you know, one. motivating me for those dark, dark two years. But um, wow, yeah, it's been it's been a it's been a mad one. And and where um, myself and Dave um, go back to Nepal in the autumn uh, to climb a couple of peaks. And yeah. the next year we're doing Aconcagua. So, um, and also K2 Base Camp next year. So yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, it's been great. Kind of having these plans because we've over the last kind of couple of years we've tried to get um you know make people's trips happen after the pandemic because you know we, we obviously came through a very difficult period for a lot of travel companies and uh luckily um and you know through a lot of yeah hard work um yeah it was great and you know we're, we're it was fantastic that you know all of our ever trackers um uh, are still here which is brilliant yeah and we're very excited now and there's so much happening there's always something happening like even this week we've had uh, over 20 people reach Everest Base Camp. You know, we got another 20 on the way. Like every week at the moment, there seems to be summits and things happening. And uh, I think Rosie's going to Tupcal next week birthday. with her dad. I know she's going on your birthday. Yep. Um, what so she said? What she say? Happy well, birthday? No, when I said what, I said you're going on my birthday. She said, you're not going to be here for my 40th. And she went, Dave, it's too painful to watch you and each. <laughs> and I was like, wow. and I was like, that's bad. I was like, wow. But also, so we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be here for your birthday next week then. Oh, yeah. you're off next week? No, I'm coming back on my oh, birthday. Yeah. I'll ah. see you on the floor, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Ah, that's going to be great. 40. Isn't it? Ah, that's fine, mate. I know. I don't feel a day under 60. It's just <laughs> <laughs> it's just a number. 40 is young. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get you down, mate. Just see it as a milestone. Ah, I couldn't, couldn't. So you're talking about systems now. Yeah, um, no, I, honestly, couldn't care less. <laughs> couldn't so care we less. talked about water, food, mind. A, a big one, and we're going to go back to the equipment side of it and, and systems is around the preparation yeah um because a lot of people kind of like to build systems into the way they pack some of us mm -hmm. don't some of us just like to throw it in um but actually as, as we evolved and, and over the last few years as our packings changed our habits have changed we there have been some things that we found really useful i know we use packing cubes a lot yeah um, from one of our good friends uh, tom who uh, was a stickler for literally getting everything as neat as possible but what well, the reason he did that is I didn't want to miss anything and, and leave anything behind. And he wanted to be organized with where his stuff is. So he knows that he's got, okay, my uh, underwear is there. I've got my waterproofs there in that uh, kind of area. I've got all of my medical stuff in this bag here. I've got my warm stuff there. So if it's a cold day, I know I'll need everything. Mm -hmm. And those are little systemized kind of things that actually save time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and keep your mind from worrying about where stuff is because then you can focus on the challenge if you know where everything is. Yeah, it's funny. I was giving Rosie a little bit of advice yesterday. Yeah. Um, because she's going to Tupcal and was debating because whether or not the, her and her dad on the actual trek can share a duffel bag, right? Yeah. And so there's the 80 litre, or I offered my <coughs> 120 litre um, North Face one. Yeah. And she was like, I don't think I'll need that. And I was like, and my only advice was, I was like, you're making a decision now before you arrive that is like kind of make or break yeah but you could make a decision that gives you peace of mind yeah you could take the duffel it packs down small hardly weighs much and if you need it it's there and if you don't yeah. all you have to do is carry a lightweight duffel bag and that's part of my Good system point. so when i'm going through my list and i'm debating what to take what not to take you know like i've got like three down jackets which one will i take i'll take the warmest one great throw the other two over there 
you know like <laughs> you know and it, it's and these things help i find peace of mind really helps that's why i've yeah. always got like loads of power banks and stuff like that and um yeah that's kind of what i tend to do and i'll pack way in advance yeah I'll, I, sometimes i can pack and repack my bag four or five times well yeah if you could go to that extent like um like ellie uh, my, my daughter she's going to um banai brakenyog or brecon beacons as most of you know it um a place called story arm just the base of penavan she's going there for a few days mm -hmm. and um her and jen were packing yesterday and uh, it's quite interesting seeing how um their, their packing methods were i kind of stood back and like, yeah. I'll, I'll let that happen you know <laughs> um don't want to get in the way but actually it was really good and, and ellie and jen were kind of okay well, that's my um wet gear that's my warm gear and then jen kind of wrote out okay exactly where what is in each bit for ellie so she's not like panicking and looking for stuff mm -hmm. it does help you know um i could see it was helping ellie um you know because this is one of her first trips without us away um it's quite interesting to see obviously you know she's 10 she's you know, she's very intelligent but still when you're doing something for the first time it, it, it can make you feel a little bit like um ooh, you know, i'll make sure I'm yeah well this is like stuff, this yeah. is her base camp at the minute yeah exactly you know going away you know on her own and she's not just sending her off to uh um <laughs> but she's not got a hogwarts i mean yeah. she's uh you know but she's um uh, it's like a, a school thing essentially yeah um yeah it's quite cool all activities you run ice axe she didn't need an ice axe didn't need axe axe no, not quite not no, quite got it but um, she's got a lot of good. She she got the good stuff. She yeah. got the good stuff, definitely. Um, Jim Blues, how you doing, Jim? I hope all is well, mate. Um, is the Vamoose app staying? Um, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, so the app is um, hundred percent separate to, to the systems and stuff, and it's um, we are trying to integrate it so it's automated. So with the development of our new systems, it will be automated. Um, it's kind of that's kind of like phase because phase one is it's kind of getting everything live, getting everything updated um and a phase two then is kind of be vamoose but up until that point it's been like a manual thing um but yeah so with regards to, to langtang valley um i'm unsure on the if that's been built yet i know langtang is you've got a, a, a trip was it next year um is the first one jim um you have to remind me let me know mate uh i know you're, you've been booked on a few trips over the years uh after ebc um but yeah let us know but you know if it's not there it is in development um with vamoose being a manual thing it's so you've got to build it you've got to release it um and yeah apologies mate we've been trying to get all these uh system stuff ready to kind of move over but yeah the vamoose app is 100 percent staying yep. um we we get great feedback from other trackers on loads of different trips obviously the ebc the the two cows the Achilles, the machu picchu you know all of our trips even like the marrow peaks and um you know all the other stuff that, that kind of comes with it it's, it's brilliant yeah um so yeah i hope you're enjoying it um obviously when we when we get that over and for everyone else, it will become kind of an automated thing. I quite like, I'm going to look this up. Um, yeah. The full benefit method. I think it, um, Dave was saying, Dave was that. saying it's like a Navy SEAL yeah. method of coming back. And it's, I like that bit at the end. Adversity makes us better if we let it. You know? Yeah, that's true, actually. I like, I like that. that. Sometimes as well, you don't realize that when you're going through adversity, you, you, your mind finds a way. And it kind of, you know, that's just basically written down about what happens when you approach yeah. a challenge you're struggling but you still do it um it's quite interesting to kind of that's quite an eloquent way of putting it actually. yeah glencoe challenge mark one <laughs> well with um with the b2 one, mountaineering with boots. the b2 mountaineering boots that yeah, i have never worn before that's in july actually i've heard it's um we're not doing it this year um no we've done it uh we've done it three times uh we've, well, you've done it twice well, oh yeah be a knee twice yeah, yeah like yeah. uh i did it once and then we had the uh, hurt my knee yeah and then i missed one because i had the op a month That's before right. yeah i had the op in june and it was in base july yeah it's base camp support uh still went up there you know with the lads and um <laughs> it's great hold great on crutches for a bit and then i went up there a year later yeah um but yeah the knee locked up in the in the bog yeah that was that was tough that bog was really tough but now a great great place um if anyone's going up there and talking about adversity it's a great event and it's a challenge um, yeah, I think that's uh, first weekend of July. Jeff, definitely check it out, Glencoe Challenge. Um, but yeah, well, we got about another ten minutes. So I know we talked about water, food, hydration. Yeah. Uh, sorry, nutrition. Uh, we talked about the mind. Um, we talked about uh, packing, but also about your trip preparation. Let's finish off with that um, because if you can again have a, a systemized approach, like I've seen recently, actually, I've had a few instances. Some people actually. And, and this isn't obviously these things happen and people can get unlucky but you can get injuries 
um, mm. kind of unfortunately anytime. Yeah. But I think some people can overexert themselves up until the time they go, and sometimes you know you've got to back off a bit. Um, and having that system where okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a week off before I go. Um, you know, and, and for some people, you know, going to the gym is like brushing their teeth. You know, it's a regular thing. So we don't want to stop that. But you can control how much you do in the gym. And I think if you definitely have a, a challenge that, you know, you're um, essentially building up to it, just try and taper that off uh, as much as you can because you don't want any last minute injuries. And I have seen that um, a couple of times. And it's, it's, it's obviously, I can imagine how you feel because, yeah, if I have an injury like a week before I'm due to go to Everest Base Camp, I'm going to be gutted. Yeah. And it's hard after the emotional build up to it. Um, but yeah, part of the trip prep is around just taking it easy. The tapering. Um, yeah, the tapering is an important that's, method. That's right? the way athletes train for yeah. big events. Yeah. You know, those athletes that just ran the London Marathon wouldn't have run a marathon like five days or, or yeah. in a week or whatever leading up. I know they're a special breed of people, so they do a lot more training than we do. But it's very important. And I, I really do struggle with this where because I am up and down yeah. with my training. And every time I restart again, I my mind wants me to go back to how I was at my last peak, <laughs> which is hard, right? You know, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. really yeah. hard. Like I'll either go to the gym and I'll be like, yeah, I remember I used to be able to bench this and I'll go. And then the next thing you know, I've decapitated myself, <laughs> you know, or like, I'll think, yeah, I remember that climb. I used to be able to like get up there in like mm -hmm. 50 minutes and then, you know, an hour and a half in, I'm like, you know, looking for the nearest defib. <laughs> you know? wow. So it is about just being realistic with yourself, isn't yeah. it? And, yeah, it is, and, yeah. and not overdoing it building that gradually and then yeah. coming down and, and go, you could another thing is you don't want to turn up like you said at EBC with an injury or a niggle yeah, it's hard. Have been avoided yeah, yeah had you just taken it easy in the week leading up to the trip oh you'd be kicking yourself yeah you would it is hard um you know when these these you know you, you can't stop yourself from getting excited um but the, the same goes with all the other stuff as well like I, know I refer back to packing um but a lot of it is is kind of having all of your all of your equipment ready before you go yeah um you know part of the part of the excitement of going on a trip is, is is buying some of the equipment and going out there and looking around stores and checking out what jacket you want checking out how you can get those some new socks maybe looking at new boots that like part of the excitement is doing that but make sure you've got those in in, in good time yeah um so you, if you can have a systemized approach of doing that before you go you know everyone the last week before they go buys something but if you can have 95 percent of that ready you're good um yeah, exactly yeah rich i covered a few weeks before going to ebc i mean yeah that definitely stops you in your tracks still made it though exactly yeah still done it yeah exactly that uh inner resilience even though um you know fair dues rich i mean i must have i can imagine it, you know having some kind of after effects as well i know a lot of people who have had covid yep. seem to have affected them a little bit i mean fair dues mate that must have been Challenge. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, yeah. Stuart Taylor doing Glencoe Challenge for the second time this July, nice. a month before Killy. Nice. Yeah, I, Stuart, we met, didn't we, in the last? Um, yeah, no, you met Stuart. Yeah, in yeah. the in the last uh, train weekend. I think it was. I think it was Glencoe Challenge. Of course it was. It was. Yeah, but I think um, Stuart, was, were you at the train weekend as well? Um, just remind us. Um, and obviously, I'm, we know Jim. Met Jim loads of times doing Glencoe Challenge with the Peaky Climbers, Peaky Bimblers. Um, <laughs> Enjoy, Jim. Um, I can't wait to see the pics. I uh, hope you have a good time, and yeah. uh, hopefully the weather is, is good as well. I we, we, we could go up there and meet some of the guys, because we talked about going up there, but we're just not doing the challenge again, doing some other peaks. I, I couldn't go up there and not do it. Oh, After... you, you go up and do it then, and I'll I'll do something else. <laughs> if I went all the way up there, I'd be like, well, saying that, we could, yeah, we there, could there's other You haven't done CMD. I haven't done the CMD, actually. That's a good point. And you've got to pick off the biggest of the, uh, the Monroes. I have. So oh. we could go up there and do that. Bracken Beacons, of course it was. It was Stuart's birthday. That's where I remember, Stuart. Yes. Hey, Stuart. I hope all is well. That was a great weekend. Um, yeah, last I hope August. life is treating you well. It was last August the one where it was um, touch warm? Yeah, you could yeah. say that. Touch warm, yeah. <laughs> it was a touch warm, Stuart, wasn't it? What a great weekend, though. What an absolutely oh, great weekend. Now, talking, talking about Brecon Beacons, um, obviously, we've got another trip. Uh, we've gone over two dates this year. But we released the, the first date, um, which is in August again. Mm -hmm um so Stuart I know you've, you've been on one already um but yeah to anyone else that wants to um uh, join us highly recommend it um one of the yetis could drop it in that would be a fantastic well, I think we had a question around that I'm not okay. sure who asked it um but can you sign Let's up for in. this weekend yeah uh even if you're not um heading out on one of your trips this year yeah um yeah 100 the training weekend is open to anyone who is going on a trip wants to go on a trip um you know if you're not booked on a trip yet this could be a perfect 
opportunity to kind of like dip your toe in the water, yeah. get to know other ever trekkers, spend some time in the mountains. And really, uh, it's the best opportunity that we can give you to learn everything you need to know about your trip yes. before you actually go there. Um, so in terms of like all the reading and everything like that, this it's a fantastic way of sort of getting it done. Yeah. Um, so I think it's going in there now, isn't it? It is. I think the because um, we've recently moved, we're still. Um, I think one of the Yetis has unfortunately put the old link in, but I'll put the new one in. There we go. Because uh, we've still got. Um, so essentially, we still have our old kind of uh, website um, on a, a what we call a subdomain, so behind the scenes. Uh, but there's the. Um, this is the correct one. I'll put it on the on the the page here, so it comes up. Yeah. So Everstrike the Code UK, and then you've got UK Training Weekend. So. Definitely, if you want to come on to the training weekend, um, definitely get yourself on there. Yeah, awesome. No, it'd be great. Um, Hopefully, the weather's going to be with us this year as well. Um, I'll be honest, I could have been a bit cooler. <laughs> if that was like, quite hot. It was like, like 38 degrees. I don't think whatever system you've got, um, it doesn't really prepare you for it. Uh, other than the, the hydration, make sure you've got enough water mm. and the sun cream. I remember that, though, because it was the Sunday hike. And then after the Sunday hike, a second day in like 30 odd degrees, Anuja was visiting was like, oh, let's go to Bike Park Wales. <laughs> That's why right, you went to Bike Park Wales. was leaving the next day, so I didn't yeah. have the heart to say no. So after the training weekend, we were, next thing I know, I'm cycling up this climb at Bike Park Wales. <laughs> <laughs> you know? brilliant, brilliant. But, you know, again, you know, what got me through that one was just thinking, like, that was more like not wanting to let someone down. Well, this is it. He's come all the way from the floor. Exactly. You know, you wanted to, you know, even though you're tired, you, you, you made the effort. So exactly. Well, and a lot of people that do our trips as well, they have a cause that they're doing it for. Exactly. Whether, you know, like EBC or Kilimanjaro, yeah. are two fantastic ways to raise money for a cause dear to your heart. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, yeah, that bit of an added motivation about who you're doing it for and who you're fighting for, mm. um, you know, that could be another system that yeah. gets you up there. You know, some exactly. people, you know, they'd never run a marathon, but as soon as, you know, they have a cause to fight for, you'd be surprised what you can actually do. Um, I'll finish off today then. I know we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, so about systems, around any, any kind of final thoughts then? Um, I think, yeah, there's not a one sort of one size fits all system for being successful in the mountains, but what it is about, I think is finding what works for you. Yeah. Generally what makes you happy in real life makes you happy in the mountain. So try and distill that into something, whether that's like we said, music, podcasts, whether it's food, water, drinks, yeah. memories. And the way to kind of test this is, is put yourself under the, put yourself under pressure, you know, go out there, do take on some tough challenges. And you'll learn about yourself and you'll yeah. find, you know, you'll, you, I often find that sometimes, you know, you've got to push the boundaries of your comfort zone in order to kind of 100%. grow. And um, the way that, you know, because, you know, before I ever did EBC or anything like that, yeah. you know, I wasn't exactly like our, most of our customers, I think, you know, not someone that was going out and doing like crazy adventurers and climbing ice yeah. wall and doing all of this mad stuff. I got into it gradually and I learned my processes. Yeah. And I think, yeah, things like the training weekend, things like getting out there by yourself and doing yeah. some lovely treks and uh, and then ultimately taking on that big one. Nice. Well, look, um, I hope that's been useful today, uh, talking about systems, thought we'd keep it um, similar to what is going on at the moment. Uh, I know there's a lot of things that we've kind of mentioned and talked about before, but I hope you've, you've found it useful. Um, I see we'll be back next week. And yeah, it's um, your birthday next week. It's a big one, four zero. Yeah. Some look forward to. Yeah. Definitely have a beer and definitely go for Yeah, no, time. I'm going to, um, yeah. I know we got some other stuff planned. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, well, uh, lovely to be back. Um, yeah, thanks to everyone that's joined today. Um, yeah, if you've enjoyed it as well, and I know people who listen on the on the podcast, um, do leave us. <laughs> it's not yet, Dave. You've got sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> um, you've got to uh, do, do leave us a little review uh, of the of the podcast as well. It helps us on there um, as well. But yeah, David McKenzie, uh, he's dropped in at the end. Yeah, no worries, David. I hope you found it useful today. I um, said so we usually run these every week. Um, it's been a bit kind of hit, um, kind of up and down lately, um, just because we're in the middle of sorting so much stuff up in the back uh, background. Um, but yeah, really excited going forward. We've got some really exciting ones coming up as well. Um, but yeah, we'll catch you guys next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful time. Awesome. Take it easy, guys. Bye. See ya. Bye.